A focus on transforming the dairy value chain within a primary growth partnership program has led to a project that's set to deliver not only a huge amount of information about milk, but savings on time and testing costs as well. Dr Jeremy Hill is Chief Science and Technology Officer at Fonterra. He's also currently President of the International Dairy Federation. We've got some of the most advanced milk testing in the world, but it's still quite limited compared to the potential components you could analyse in milk. With that information, we have the ability to far better tailor our products that we manufacture and in doing so create more value from that milk. Milk is milk, but you know there are literally dozens of different types of proteins in milk and actually thousands of different types of milk fat, for example. We started working on this about three or four years ago. It's quite a difficult thing to achieve and over recent years we've developed this technology through the Primary Growth Partnership initiative that we have with Dairy NZ and the New Zealand Government. Every day, Milk Test NZ are testing the milk from oh, 13,000 farms. Now for Fonterra, we have uh, about 10,000 farms and every day their milk is tested here. The safety and the quality of our raw milk is absolutely essential for Fonterra, so that's our primary purpose for that testing. So the components that are incredibly important for us obviously are the fat and the protein within the milk. We look at total bacteria, we also check that there's no inhibitory residues in the milk. We look at a variety of tests just to be very clear that that milk is of high microbial and compositional quality. Farmers are getting that suite of core test results back every day because that's helping them to understand the quality of their milk and what they might need to change to continue to produce very high quality milk. There's also other tests that are available to them, for example, if they wanted to better understand the urea concentration in their milk, that sort of thing, they can request those tests themselves. The composition of the milk across the season is, is absolutely fascinating. Uh, I mean, if you're sitting looking at your milk in the morning as you tip it onto your cereal, you think it all looks pretty much the same. But interestingly enough, I mean, there are subtle changes right across the season. We use an RFID tag to mark that sample right at the farm, and then that RFID tag stays with the sample right through this laboratory. So we're very, very confident on our traceability. We have embarked on quite a long-term research project to come out with what we're calling milk fingerprinting. How this works, in essence, is we shine light through the milk, and some of that light is absorbed by the milk and the different components in the milk, and some of it is not you get a picture of it that we're calling a fingerprint. The fingerprint is completely unique to that sample. So while there'll be similarities from day to day on that farm, it is indeed a unique sample, a unique fingerprint every day. This is really useful because it gives us a whole new level of information about that milk that we didn't have before, and we get it almost instantaneously. We can look at that milk, understand it much better, and then use it slightly differently in our processing. We have a really interesting component in our milk that shows up late in the season, particularly if we have a drought. It's an interesting component, it's not a problem for most of our products, but for some of our newer, higher value products, it's a little bit challenging with the processing. So we are monitoring that uh, through the season, particularly late in the season, and the, the test to monitor that, we, we have a result for every farm within two minutes for that. Now, if we were sending that off to the traditional laboratory, not only would it be costing us literally tens of millions of dollars to get that information, but we would have to wait three days, by which time we've already processed that milk. Once we've collected all the data using milk fingerprinting, we can then, using that analysis, and actually it's some sophisticated software and uh, mathematics that we do on the analysis that enables us to then tailor that particular milk to a manufacturing process and a particular type of product. What milk fingerprinting lets us do is to look at the trends over a number of days and then use our dynamic tanker scheduling programs that we, we operate for all of our uh, tanker collections across New Zealand to then go to the farms that are producing those particular characteristics. And as I, you know, it's quite frankly, it's, it's impossible to do this, or was impossible to do this using other um, standard classical approaches to analysis. We do, of course, already collect milk from certain farms, such as organics, 
to produce certain product lines. This is taking it a few steps further and saying, if we want to produce a particular type of milk, and what we're doing already is uh, there's a premium opportunity for us in UHT, branded UHT milk in China. To be in that market, you absolutely need consistent quality across the season. And by using milk fingerprinting and understanding a lot about the detailed characteristics of milk, the processing requirements of UHT and the product requirements of UHT, we can match that milk to those products. Milk fingerprinting is about premiums. It's about making the most out of every drop of milk. So rather than um, just you know, taking milk that is great for a particular product and then basically averaging that across all different types of products, we can tailor that milk to the product that is best suited to its characteristics and therefore make the most premium products we can, sell those for the most premium prices we can and provide those returns back to our farmer shareholders. As we get a better understanding of how the milk characteristics change with the farming practices, with the changes that occur on farm, linking those to our processing requirements, linking those to our product requirements, we'll be able to provide information back to the farmers that it'll enable them to optimise potentially the production of that milk to increase the profitability of that milk in their vats. We're not talking about, at this point, individual premiums for individual farmers. That might be a potential application that we could use this milk fingerprinting technology for in the future, quite frankly. But what it does do at the moment is allows us to optimise the whole system. I've been in science within Fonterra now for approximately 30 years and it would be no exaggeration to say this is one of the most game-changing pieces of science and technology I've seen, I think we've been involved in. Um, we're scraping the surface at the moment, quite frankly. The potential of this technology long-term is fantastic because what we will be able to do is take the vast amount of information we collect in our processing sites about our processing characteristics, all of the information we collect in market, the information that we're collecting on farm about all of the farming data and link that through milk fingerprinting technology. So understanding how those fingerprints relate to that processing data, to the product characteristics and to the farming practices. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.